welcome you to the video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. The video I'm going to be looking at today comes from the Free America Podcast. Adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun. Um, and this one is, a, is, a, is going to be a fun one. I'm going to go here and see what this individual has to say, what his knowledge, his perception of Russell J. Gould is in the introduction. Uh, now we're going to go to our guest, who I, I described earlier as a man who is really just He's laid his life on the line. He's been at this for quite some time now. I mean, well, back into the late 90s, from what I understand, he has been standing up to the the forces of um, the U.S. government and the, the global uh, government cabal, really, in helping to take back our uh, reclaim, really, our freedom and our sovereignty from this uh, this this corporate government fiction. That's what. In the hell is this guy talking about? Take back and reclaim what? From where? When you say something like take back and reclaim, that implies that at one time, someone had something, and then it was taken from them. And now, that's, uh, someone wants to get whatever they had taken from them and take it back. At what point have any of you ever been sovereign? In the sense that this man's talking about. At what point has, has your parents been sovereign? Or their parents? Or their parents? Or their parents? What is he talking about? What point in history was anyone sovereign? Some imaginary place back in the foggy mists of time? <laughs> when everybody got along and there was no violence and everything was cool? No. I mean, seriously. Are we talking about the time when these folks from this country came over to this continent, conquered it, subjugated and committed genocide on the, the people that were already there and took over? Is that when the sovereignty was? And then it somehow was taken away? Think about it logically, ladies and gentlemen. What he's saying makes absolutely no sense. It's a myth that's been perpetrated down through the years, in my opinion. And people still buy into it. It's a good soundbite. It gets people, you know, to, you know, invest energy and money and whatever else in these goofy causes about being patriotic and taking back, taking it back. Taking back what? Something you never had, right? <laughs> been operating and, and been laid over us for so long now. So, uh, but I will bring him on to explain all that to you. So please join me in welcoming Russell hyphen Jake. Colin Gould to the show. Russell, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, awesome. Nick, for having me on your, for your audience. I hope I answer your questions to the best of my capacity. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a, you know, this is a very, uh, you know, complex subject and it's... I got to point out the, the error in the name there and also the error in the title of the video. We've got the colon space and the R and the colon and the space and the H. That is not correct. Every correct sentence structure, whether it's a name, a title, or a sentence, 
must start with a cause, which is the position of four, and that is represented by having the colon tied up against the first letter of the first fact in the sentence or title or name. And this is a mistake that is made over and over and over again, which leads me to believe either the author doesn't know what the hell they're doing or they're doing it on purpose. It's, it's not something that's very easily understood. I know when I first started looking into um, um, some of the things that, that, as I mentioned, have some overlap with this, things like the sovereign movement or, the, or becoming a U.S. national, there's a lot of language in there, a lot of descriptions uh, that I found are, 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 uh, have some overlap with what, what you're talking about. And, and one of those is perhaps we can just start with the language of it, right? So you, the spelling of your name. Um, for example, it, it's it's unique, and I've I've seen this other places before with other people I know who who work in this realm. Can you can you perhaps start off by just telling us what is the the meaning with the the colons and the hyphens, and how does that all work? Well, first of all, uh, it, it's to comprehend how the principles and the function of syntax, which is the order of operations of words. Um, you have to look at how, what word comes in front of another, and it's a manipulation or a play on words to create either adjectives or pronouns or adverbs or verbs. So we were taught in our first grade that about what they called nouns, what we call as facts. Mm -hmm. Facts were persons, places, and things, or, and concepts, right? But numbers are nouns. And so when we look at the concept of time, like on our clocks, we have like a five colon 16 mm -hmm. and that five okay. colon 16 if we were to drop the procedure out which is the colon mm. we lose jurisdiction of how we're trying to articulate our noun that's not entirely accurate ladies and gentlemen because you can articulate as he says time which i don't participate with that in my correct sentence structure contracts, I don't use the word time because to me, time is, a, is an illusion. I use the word continuum. If you drop the colon out, what he said, five, what did he say? What, whatever he said there, five, 16. If you write it out as zero, five, one, seven, that is a particular location in the morning, early in the morning of the, of the now space. If you were to articulate that for the afternoon, then it would be what? One seven, one six, or one seven, one seven. 17, 17, 17, 16. One thousand, you know, whatever it is. You don't need the colon to articulate time. The military runs on it all the time. <laughs> that was a pun. Uh, so that's not entirely accurate. As long as you articulate in your correct sentence structure what you're claiming and you give closure to it, it doesn't matter if you have a colon in there or not as far as what he's talking about. So you can say, for the claims knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the location with the continuum of the 0516, right? With the knowledge by the claimant or something like that. I've just told you, I'm giving you a location in the continuum, i.e. time, and it's 0516, 516 in the morning. Easy. So what he's saying there, I mean, he might be saying it just for educational purposes, but it's not accurate. So now we, we have 5 space 16 or 516. Mm. Point B, you create a contract. If you took the colon out, why would there be a space there? There wouldn't be. Because if there was no colon there to begin with, then the, the numbers would be together. Right? A subjective interpretation on what these words mean. But when you keep in the mechanic of the, of the procedure, you then maintain the volition of what you're trying to articulate, which is time. So these are the reasons why I have the colon and the punctuation in my name. I have a colon in front of Russell, followed by a space, and then, then a hyphen, J, which makes a compound noun. And if you look at your federal government styles manual, it says all compound nouns are to be hyphenated. That's what makes them a compound noun. Now, it sounds like he's giving jurisdiction to a fiction styles manual for his grammar. 
with the balance of the honor and the grace, I have to feel like that's not true. I don't think that Russell does that. I think that Russell gives jurisdiction to his own styles manual for his grammar, but it appears as though he's saying that here. So that's that's some food for thought. I mean, as I've said many times in the past, if you want to give jurisdiction to the fiction for your grammar, that's entirely up to you, but you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. The federal <laughs> styles manuals are the style of grammar and mathematical functions that each country files with the International Bureau of Weights and Measures in France. And I went toe to toe with the International Bureau of Weights and Measures in France in 2004. On Again, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to stop this here, you know, for this section, because, of course, he goes into these stories that he tells that there are absolutely no certifications for, no proof other than what he's saying. Now, as far as the Federal Styles Manual, this is important to each and every individual that wants to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. I myself have a Federal Styles Manual. You can use the word federal if you want to, if you have closure on what that word is, but you have to know what it is. Each individual just can have their own styles manual in their own dictionary. And if you want to contract with them, then you would necessarily have to be in joinder with their terms and conditions, their styles and their and their finite means for their words, for their facts. And when you make contract, and this is the beauty of contract because it's all consent, you come together, you would agree on those things. I mean, if I, you know, I have a dictionary, there's almost 2,000 words in it. You might have a dictionary. And if we want to contract together, the facts that we use in that specific contract we would have to be in joinder with the closure on those facts. Okay? One word, one meaning. Rule one, rule equal. And then we contract. That's the way it works. The minute you try to force somebody to do something, now you're in the realm of the fiction. Now you're in the domain of the fiction, the fraud. That's a warlike act. When you try to force someone to do something, it's, I'll, say it, I'll call a spade a spade. It's rape. That's what it is. Okay? So the minute you try to force someone to do something against their will, it's not correct. Yeah, and so when we talk about quantum grammar, we use a now tense scenario in our communication, which means we don't, when we're writing a lawsuit, we don't use the word to in the lawsuit because that's a future tense adverb with 26 different definitions. To is not necessarily a future tense adverb. To is a non-tangible contract word they can either be an adverb, a verb, or a pronoun. For example, if I say in, to, as two separate words, in is an adverb and to is a dangling participle verb. If I say window, to, window is one word and to is another word, window is an adjective and to is a future tense pronoun. And then, of course, if I say to the, to is future tense adverb, and the is a dangling participle verb. Just to clarify, I mean, because if you're going to claim to have some sort of authority or whatever, be an authority of this grammar, you have to know what you're talking about, and you have to be accurate when you're explaining it and give closure to it. And what he just said there, yes, while T-O can be a future tense adverb, that's not the only thing it can be. These are basic, rudimentary, very simple judge mechanics. Rule one, rule equal. You have to give the whole story. You can't just give a little part of it because that might be withholding evidence. And so we, I've taken a look and did a, uh, I have about 300,000 hours of study time in syntax and the order of operations of how corporate structures set up on a global level. As well. It doesn't matter how many hours you have. If those hours, if you've been studying an incorrect knowledge base. So if you're going to sit here and say, you know, that this is correct or that's correct, or this is, you know, talk about the grammar, you have to know what you're talking about. You have to convey these things correctly and prove it. And if this guy's teacher was a guy that put out stuff that had mistakes all over it, well, then it stands to reason that this man's stuff is also going to have mistakes on it. 
and it does. I've looked at all of his publicly available contracts written in what he calls quantum grammar, and there are, just like David Wynn Miller's stuff, mistakes all over it. And again, as I said at the beginning, I'm not trying to, it's not personal. I'm looking at the grammar. Some people may take it personal. They may think I'm trying to attack people. But at the end of the day, I'm not. I'm here to be correct. My loyalty is to the facts and correctness. And if that's not the bottom line, if the bottom line of all this stuff, if the base of it is not the grammar and it's something else, tell me. Because you and I are not on the same page then. Because I thought the bottom line, the base foundation, the root of everything going on in this domain was the grammar. It's the be-all, end-all. It's the most important thing. Well, it's contract to contract, so I and, and setting up judicial systems. And so these are some of the, the doors that I've been down in the, in the last 20, I'm coming up on 28 years now doing my study. And it's taken me through um, the quantum grammar, which is we use prepositional phrases, so we preset the facts. So because a court can't try a fact, facts can never be put on trial. The that's interesting. I've heard him use this before. Preset the facts. Doesn't that violate the continuum? Doesn't that violate the now space? If you're presetting something, you're setting something ahead of time instead of setting it right now? Maybe that's kind of like that thing that uh, David Wood Miller used to use for the bridge is over the water. Maybe it's just a teaching tool, but it's not correct. <laughs> it's definitely not correct. Saying preset the facts, that's a, that's a negative condition of state because you're negating the now space. Just like for the bridge is over the water, doesn't make sense forwards and backwards. The only thing that could be put on trial is the condition of mind of why the fact was used, who used the fact in the condition of state, when it was used, and did that fact harm someone. Therefore, you can't put the facts on trial. As a judge, we put the condition of mind, the condition of thinking on trial. I would be negligent if I didn't mention here that I possess something called a fate writ volition claim, where I have a document contract postal vessel court venue that I've created, which gives closure to what my volition is in the now space. It's a correct sentence structure claim written in quantum grammar that tells you, that articulates what my volition is, what my fate is. So therefore, volition is never in question. It's on paper. There's closure to it. So there's no need for a trial. <laughs> it's all right there. I wonder if he has a fate writ volition claim. Because, I mean, why wouldn't you want a fate writ volition claim? Why wouldn't you want people to know what your intentions are or your volition or your volition is? Unless maybe you don't want people to know that. And so the quantum grammar and the things that I've done on a global level, not only for the U.S. judicial system, as, as many of my audience knows that will be watching this, that I am chief judge at the U.S. Supreme Court, as well as chief judge at the World Court at The Hague. My first conversations with the World Court at The Hague and entering my, my hat into that arena was in... Okay, again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to stop it here for this part because, again, there is no certification, no evidence of this other than this man talking about it. I've been in this for five years. I've talked to literally hundreds of people all over the earth. Can find no evidence of this, no physical evidence, no continuance of the evidence that any of this happened other than him talking about it. So, I mean, allegedly there is video evidence. And, and here's another thing, ladies and gentlemen. He, the titles that he has, he can claim those titles. You can claim anything you want to claim. You can create a document contract postal vessel court venue saying that you are whatever it is you want to be, you know, chief commander of the cosmos or whatever, and you send it back to yourself just like a live life claim, and now you've copyright copy claimed that title to yourself and you claim that title, that's all well and fine. Yeah, you have the title now. Now you are commander of the cosmos for the commander of the cosmos. But you have to perform on that title. 
You have to be able to prove it. Otherwise, yeah, you have the title and you can claim that, but it doesn't hold any value to anybody because you're not performing on it. There's no proof that you perform on that title. You see what I'm saying? You can claim whatever the heck you want to claim. You can even create it in correct sentence structure. You can even copyright it. You can even pay the fee for freight for the title and claim it as your own. But it doesn't mean anything to anybody else unless you can perform on it and prove it. I need evidence. I need proof. And unfortunately, there is none in this scenario. And I've looked very, very diligently. I've even actually asked that guy right there for evidence of some of his claims. And no go. And I have these uh, emails on file. And I will be publishing them in the future. I unfortunately have a different perspective about Mr. Trump because I went to Mar Largo and sat down with his attorneys and the U.S. Secret Service. So our educational difference is much different. And they mm -hmm. were, from my perspective, very foolish in their knowledge structure. And, mm -hmm. you know, they were, they were pretty upset that they just didn't know a lot of things. And so once I explained to them the pecking order, how it works, they were very upset about my position as chief judge at the U.S. Supreme Court. What does he mean by pecking order? Because isn't he the one that first mentioned rule one, rule equal? Right? Rule one, rule equal. I think it was in that six-hour uh, seminar that he did that Mark Lowercase K. Kishon Christopher attended way back when. Rule one, rule equal, geometric level playing field. There is no pecking order. Everyone's equal, right, Russell? As I said a few minutes ago, if you're going to claim a title, you've got to be able to perform on it. And so far, there's been no evidence of any performances. And why would this individual want to be, why would anyone want to be chief judge at the Supreme Court, which is supreme in and of itself has a particle of negation in it. It negates the now space and it negates the geometric level playing field. There is no supremacy it's all equal, right? Right, Russell? Aren't we all equal? I mean, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just trying to, in, in a cheeky way, in a humorous way, but very serious, trying to bring this to light. I genuinely participate the best I can with a geometric level playing field of contract. People that talk about pecking order and supremacy do not. They may say they do, but their actions and their words show otherwise you know the, they just didn't know once they saw the credentials and all the paperwork they're like well you're the chief judge i'm like okay so he just said that trump's attorneys or whoever their knowledge level was foolish and that they didn't know they were upset about what they didn't know and then he showed them paperwork remember when i said about the paperwork how you can create your own uh document vessels and you could say you're commander of the cosmos, and then you have that paperwork. So that's kind of like what he's saying. He has these paperwork saying he's supreme judge at the whatever, and he's showing it to them. Well, if they're foolish in their knowledge level, how the hell can they even read what he has there? Not only because it's in his version of, or the best of his knowledge, quantum grammar, but there's probably, you know, if they even knew correct sentence structure, then they would know that there's mistakes all over it. So it's like a double whammy there. I mean, how can they even understand what they're reading? And how would that be evidence to them? It's like, uh, hey, Trump's lawyer. Uh, I, I'm commander of the universe. See, because it says so on this piece of paper. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't know that. Because it says it on that paper right there, you're commander. Sorry, sir. Follow the logic, ladies and gentlemen. I highly recommend following logic. Yeah. 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 His, really? His, 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 because there are no U.S. presidents. That ended in 1999. I've heard David and Russell say this again and again and again, yet here we are. There's a U.S. president, isn't there? Guess what? And again, I bring you back to the cold, hard logic of the matter. 
He's saying that there was a point in time when there were no more presidents. But there still are presidents. There's one right now. Now go back to that point in time where he says there were no presidents. So he's saying that there were presidents before that, but it's still fiction. So it doesn't matter. It's all fiction. You don't get to pick and choose. It's either a fact or it's not. You're either using correct grammar or you're not. Do you see what I'm saying? And so ever since 1999, all U.S. presidents have been moved out of Washington, D.C. So every, anything that they do under executive order can't be established as a law so they can keep on overriding, 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 overriding. Well, yeah. Again, if you look at what's going on in the world, it's all, it's all wonderful what he's saying. If it were true, oh boy, you know. But it's not. Laws are still enacted. Executive orders are still passed. People are still suffering. Is life any better today than it was in 1999? When, when David and Russell uh, you know, disqualified the U.S. presidents in 1999, has life suddenly gotten better for everybody in the fiction? Is everything wonderful now? Has the past two, three years been golden kitty cats and puppy dog tails for everybody out there? I challenge the world to study about quantum, uh, what they call quantum entanglements. We don't call them quantum entanglements because EN means no as a prefix. We call them quantum hype entanglements. And then we change our condition of thinking to change that paradigm in a way where that outside umbrella that's bombarding doesn't get to come into that net, into our nexus, into... Why would he be suggesting that people change what they're doing? Isn't change modification? It isn't modification perjury? Our, into our lineage, into our privacy, into our paradigm, into our thinking, and now gives a position of sovereignty, which everyone has the right to be sovereign. I'm not going to be judgmental. There are different levels of sovereignty based upon education, based upon knowledge, based upon where you've been, what you've done, and the articulation of how you conduct business through your grammar. These are things that, that, I, that I'm a witness to. I'm a student of. I'm a student of life. I love everyone. I love, I love the world. I love my space. I love peacefulness, happiness. And I'm a, I'm a pretty easygoing guy. I'm a very complex guy because of the multiverse that I, that I designed. But... Uh, once the people learn how to shift their thinking. Again, as I've mentioned in other psychological videos, it's my experience that if someone's telling you how nice they are or how smart they are or how complex they are, how honest they are, how humble they are, if someone's telling you that, it usually means they are the exact opposite of what they are claiming. For me... It's not my position. I don't have a place to tell you that I'm any of those things. Other people may say that. That's other people's jobs if they want to take that up. To say that, hey, you know, Jason's this or Jason's that. Because they're the ones that would know. I wouldn't know that because I'm on the inside looking out. I may think this or that. I may think that I'm this. Or I may think that I'm that. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you that because why do I need to convince you of that? I'll just let my performances show that. Or you can talk to other people about me who know me and have spoken with me and have interacted with me and they can tell you what I am or who or what, how I behave. If I'm complex or if I'm a simpleton, if I'm nice or if I'm mean, you know, I mean, it's not up to me to say that. Really, I mean, if you, with my perception, if you possess even just a little bit humi of humility, these are things you would not mention to someone else, especially someone else you don't even know, who's not your friend, who's not your homie, who doesn't hang out with you. I mean, that's the way I look at it, though. But I'm old school that way. Heck yeah, man. I'm excited to see all the creative scientists out here, all the ventures, all, all the people to create their own paradigms to control their, 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 their wealth for their loved ones, their food. 
I'm not sure that Russell has closure on what the word control means. First of all, there's a particle of negation in there, contra. Contra means no, as in contradiction, first of all. And second of all, control is a term of war. It implies that you are making something do something that it doesn't want to do, that it's against its will. To control the world, right? Control your emotions. I personally prefer the psychology of using the concept of stewardship. I'm a steward of my contracts. I'm a steward of my vessel. I'm a steward of my, of, uh, my paradigm, however you want to say it. I don't control anything because I don't want to make anyone or anything do anything that it doesn't want to do against its will. That's how I look at it anyways, because I genuinely try my best to participate with peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal, and honor and grace. And I had slid myself into position on the Title IV flag, which the flag bearer controls the terms of contract on August 12, 1999, one year before that, that controversy. So I saw the bankruptcy ending, I put myself in position, and I set up tenants to join the location of my corporate structures to use the Title IV flag to hold them at bay. And it works every single time if you're under contract with the correct people. If you're not under contract with the correct people and you're working with these that did not convey the performances, who did not do the duties, who do not know the terms and rules of, contra of the contracts that are in place on a global construct, this is why I took out the World Bank, the IMF, the International Bank of Settlements, International Court of Arbitration, International Chamber of Commerce, you name it, I've been there. United Nations, I've been down all the roads, all the doors that control people's world for corporate business construct. I rewrote those guidelines and set up a paradigm that falls outside the jurisdiction of the fiction world. Because fiction, in fact, you can't prove a fiction, which means you can't prove the grammar of what they're saying because it doesn't say anything you can't prove they have a flag because they vacated the estate and i'm the i'm the tenant the last flag standing that's why i have the last flag standing that's my documentary is yeah. i'm the last flag standing right this is a true phenomenon this is correct right there's a lot of imposters out here that are being gaslit and acting like me but they did not do the performances they're not part of corporate structure. They're not part of the actual setting up of the construct for the world, for the people. And therefore, if you're using their supposed fake jurisdiction, even though they're using correct grammar, it doesn't make it correct and you're going to lose. He just said, even though you're using correct grammar, it's not correct. What in the hell does that even mean that reminds me of one of his cult followers who contacted me and said jason you may be using correct grammar but you're wrong oh so now correct grammar is not the thing it's i'm wrong because i'm not kissing russell's ass is that what it is listen ladies and gentlemen i've said this time and time again about the flag and people are because of this man are afraid because of the way he talks about it for the last five years i have had multiple multiple successes using correct sentence structure communication parse index grammar using the flag i took david win miller's flag constitution which was publicly available before he passed away and I corrected it, to the best of my knowledge, into a correct sentence structure contract. Open source. It was open source until, well, it still is, okay? By my knowledge, if you have the knowledge and you know how to use it, you can use it. Knowledge brings authority. You have to know what you're talking about in order to be an authority. Authority just means you're an author of your contracts. I have never once gotten in any kind of trouble for using a correct sentence structure contract with the Title IV flag on it. Never. I've had 100% success with it. 
every single time. And this is what I teach people to do it on their own. They're not subservient to me. I don't ask them to come under my authority. I encourage and teach them to take authority over themselves using this flag and this grammar, which prior to David Wynn Miller's passing was publicly known, publicly available. Everyone could create their own claims of the live lives and all this, that, and the third. But then when David passed, all of a sudden, this guy tried to bottleneck everything, trying to make everyone think that this is some kind of classified stuff and that you need his permission to use it. Whereas before, when David was here, no permission was needed. There's just a lot of things that don't add up with what this guy says. And like he said, if you're not under his corporate structure, thank Odin, thank whomever that I'm not in that corporation. At one time I wanted to be, but thank goodness I'm not. Because, wow, if you've ever spoken with anybody that comes from that, that area, you know what I'm talking about. No thank you. But I don't need it. If he truly felt the way he felt, you know, if, if he truly lived up to what he said, meaning he wants everybody to be free and he wants everybody to, to be able to be sovereign and do what they're going to do with correct grammar, then why would he try to bottleneck it? Why would he try to get everybody to come in and kiss his ass and bow down to him? Why does he need that? Is that something, you know, is that sort of an ego thing? I don't know what that is. Because I certainly don't do that. Um, for myself, I don't want to be a leader. I don't want to have command of anyone except for myself. And that's what I teach to other people. I truly try my best to participate with the balance of honor and grace, the maintenance of the rule one, rule equal, and the position of peace and neutrality. And the point I'm trying to make is, I'm kind of on a soapbox now, sorry about that, is that what this individual is saying, there, there's so many contradictions in it, and it all comes down to the grammar. Where is the correct grammar from this guy? Show me a contract and I can show you at least a dozen errors or more on it. For we the people, because we're not at war. Citizens don't have don't go to war with each other. We communicate. We love Citizens don't go to war with each other. They communicate. What about that time you beat up your mentor? What about that time you physically assaulted David Wynn Miller? Was there dialogue there? Come on. Learn how to settle our controversies man to man or woman to woman or whatever. Learn how to settle our controversies man to man or woman to woman. Do you mean through dialogue or do you mean through fist fighting? We, we claim to be because we're accountable for our actions. We have accountability for what we do. So the quantum system brings accountability and correction on the thinking so we can put our thinking on trial to know why we did what we did. So hopefully that helps you, Nick. So that's a, that's a very good point, to know why you did what you did. Why did you physically assault David Wynn Miller? Oh, so that you could force him to sign over or autograph over the copyrights of the grammar to you? Is that why? You forced him to do that under duress? War negates contract, doesn't it? Is that the kind of individual you are? Is that how you settle your conflicts and your controversies? Through physical violence or through dialogue? I'm confused. There's mixed signals here, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? I mean, isn't everyone held to the same standard if it's rule one, rule equal, right? Isn't it rule one, rule equal? Everyone's held to the same standard? Or is there a pecking order? Is there someone in charge and then there's all of us little people down here? I mean, you got to make up your mind about this stuff. Seriously. And again, I bring it back to the grammar. And I say this with all due honor and grace. 
where is the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar for the copyrights to the grammar technology? Show it to me. That's a rhetorical question, ladies and gentlemen, because I've seen it. I've seen the contract, and there are errors all over it. So again, it begs the question that I've, I've asked multiple times, and again, it's a rhetorical question. How can you claim any kind of authority over something that's supposedly a correct grammar when you yourself do not possess the knowledge to convey a correct grammar? How can you tell someone else to be correct when you yourself are not using correct grammar? When there's mistakes all over your grammatical performances and you just blow by it and don't even admit to it, don't fix anything, don't acknowledge it. You just expect people to take you at your word and bow down. And that, to me, is a violation of rule one, rule equal, and the geometric level playing field of, of contract. And that's why I have no interest in doing anything with any of these people, with that guy or anyone else. Because if you're going to violate rule one, rule equal, and you're going to violate the geometric level playing field of contract, then you and I are not on the same page, quite obviously. I'm not going to be angry because I'm not going to be judgmental because that is a that's a carnal thing, and I'm not that's not what what we're, what we're up against here. Right. We're up against a, a whole whole apparatus. That's where we must contain our thoughts and we must be able to control what we're doing. And hopefully, the paradigm that I've shown the world gives people a, a network and a safe haven that they can step into. So he just said he's not judgmental, and he didn't. Uh... He doesn't hold it. The people that beat him and, and, and tortured him allegedly uh, when he went to prison, he's not being judgmental of them uh, at all, he's saying. Because that's a carnal thing. Ladies and gentlemen, do you remember those videos that he produced a couple years ago where he was in some dimly lit garage and he was dropping F-bombs and kicking stuff and, and he... And he, and he published that public document, something about, pardon my language, trashy, trashy bitch having to do with Sergeant Robert Horton. Do you remember that? Is, was that, is that a non-judgmental thing? Is that solving, you know, I mean, is that being peaceful and neutral? I mean, what is that? <laughs> There's just so many dichotomies I'm trying to bring to light here. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm bringing you back to the beginning of the video where I said this is a video of opinion for educational and entertainment purposes only. I'm mentioning these other things, bringing them to your attention, and it all ties into the grammar. Where is the correct grammar performance? Where? Show me. If the grammar is the basis of this guy's paradigm, show me a correct grammar performance. If this guy was truly humble, truly into the geometric level playing field and all that stuff, then why wouldn't he be open to fixing those things in his grammar that are not correct? Why wouldn't he want to work with someone who has closure on the grammar, who has over 400 videos on their YouTube channel, instead of slandering me? It doesn't make any sense unless you take into account, zoom out, look at the whole picture, and say, ah, perhaps this individual is not interested in working with others. Perhaps they're not humble. Perhaps they want to make a buck. Perhaps they want to be in control. And it's as I've said before, I feel like it's fiction. It's all fiction. It navigates the same as a fiction, right? Through fear-mongering, through passive-aggressive uh, browbeating. Oh, you better come into this construct if you want to be correct, or you're going to lose. You're going to lose. There's no L's on my record. <laughs> I've done just fine by myself. I don't need a Russell. I don't need a Mark. 
I don't need a David. I just need a Jason. That's it. As far as correct grammar goes and conveying my, uh, articulating my volition and stopping trespass, I don't need anybody's help. I'm fine. And that's what I teach to my students. There are plenty of people who buy into the authoritarian structure. I mean, why wouldn't they? I mean, everybody's been brought up that way. It's just a natural thing to want to have someone, a figurehead out there representing you. Why, is, why do you think there's a president? Or, you know, I mean, senators and representatives and things like that. Uh, people just want leadership. They just want to follow someone most times because that's what we're brought up to do. It's a very hard concept to break free from to become autonomous i mean if someone is is literally about sovereignty then why would they ask you to come under their authority if they're truly interested in everyone being sovereign and free then why do you got to bow down to them first isn't that just like the fiction and there's a lot of good people in the world. I'm so thankful just to be a, yeah. a, a part of my fellow mankind. And I consider myself an average person, even though I, I, I created what I created. And I'm so <laughs> centric in my chemistry, uh, and my chemistry projects. It's, oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, so you know. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, what I said about before about people telling you what they are. Oh, I'm an average person. Mm -hmm. He really thinks he's an average person, right? You believe that one? I got some beachfront property to sell you in Idaho. I'm very thankful. Uh, yeah, I agree. There are, there are a lot of good people in this world, and it seems yeah. as if that the the evil ones are the ones with these <laughs> ambitions. Uh, the ones who are sociopaths and psychopaths are the ones that seem to rise to these positions of power and influence. Um, and sociopaths and psychopaths rise to positions of power. One of the things you said, Nick, really uh, appealed to me. You were like, man, I need to walk away from it, right? And, and what does that really entail? Well, to walk away, we have all these tentacles that we've, that we've had positioned into our lives, unbeknownst and beknownst to us, that we have to figure out how to, to make that utility work for us if we so choose it to or to withdraw from it, right? So how do we go about that? And these What he just said there. I agree, for the most part. He uses the word tentacles. That's fine. I mean, octopuses are, are beautiful creatures and one of the most intelligent. I saw a documentary about an octopus on, I don't know where I saw it, but it was a wonderful documentary. Be that as it may, I agree with what he's saying here because that's one thing I've learned to do is to basically coexist with this system because I'm really in a position of do no harm. I'm not here to harm the system. And I also am not here to be harmed. So once the system learns not that it, it cannot harm you, then it will leave you alone. That's how it works. You don't need a, a Jason or a Russell or a David or a Nick Yaya to tell you that or authorize you to do that. It's you that can do that with correct grammar on your own without anyone's authorization because you can be an author too <laughs> if you learn it. Aside from the sales pitch he gave there for his claim of the live life, I agree with what he's saying. Let's put it in the context of, of all the other things he's claimed, in any case. Because he's the one making the claims, so when you make a claim in the public, you got to be able to prove it. Unless you're giving an opinion, in which case you don't need to prove it. And as I stated at the beginning of the video and multiple times in the videos, these are my opinions. This is a video of opinion. If you want to know about facts, go ahead and check out the grammar videos on my YouTube channel. Those are the facts that I will certify and back up. This is just my opinion. I listened to Russell talk about this. You think about the things that he's claimed, the titles he's claimed 
all the titles, military and otherwise, that he's claimed. And yet here we are, 5G. He's suggesting people protect themselves. If he really is who he says he is and he can really perform on these titles that he claims, why wouldn't he be protecting the people? If he is all of those things. If he's done all of those things, gone to The Hague, the Supreme Court, this place, that place, why isn't things why aren't things better for everyone for the general public even people that don't know about him which they're i mean face it the majority of the population has no idea who this guy is wouldn't life be better right now why would we go through what we went through in the last two or three years if this guy is who he says he is and has done the things he says he's done now his people's excuse always is well we need to bring chief forward you know, we need to let people know about it. We need to put them on the news and we need to, because it's the people. So, oh, so basically it has nothing to do with him. It has to do with the people. The people don't need that guy. That guy needs the people in order to get anything accomplished. Right? That's logic. So why do you even need someone like him? Think about it. And this is what I've been teaching for five years. No, I don't have 300,000 hours. I have a little over 20,000 hours. Small fry. However, a very successful small fry. A small fry that can back up what they say, as far as the grammar goes. What I'm trying to convey is, each and every one of us has authority within us if we choose to learn and find out how to convey ourselves with correctness through the now space. You don't need my thumbprint or autograph to do that. You don't need his thumbprint or autograph to do that. You just need yours. Because as we go through the sea of space, we are experiencing things through first-hand knowledge, through our senses our port of sensation of which we are port authorities. And I'm going to bring it down to a personal level. I'm a port authority of this port of sensation. I have five senses. Some people say there's more. That's how I interact with the world. This would not exist if I was not sensing it right now. And the same thing goes for you. Okay? Once you realize that on a psychological level, and you learn this grammar... You can navigate through the now space as your own authority and stop all the trespasses, stop people from messing with you, become a steward of your contracts. And if your volition is to be peaceful and neutral, the system will leave you alone. And you don't need me to do that. I mean, you don't need my authority to do that. You don't need, you don't need his authority to do that. You just need to learn how to do it. So the bottom line of this video is that at one time I had much honor and grace for this individual. Um, I have been in communication with him as I shared in the past. I have the emails on file. One day I will be publishing them to prove what I'm saying. I've already, I already have published some of them in my journey uh, series of videos where I talk about how I began learning correct sentence structure uh, years ago. But I will be publishing the rest of them to show that I have a reason to feel the way I do about this guy and about David and about Mark Sean Christopher and why I take the position I do, which is a position of peace and neutrality unaffiliated with anyone. Thanks for watching.